chat gpt just became way more powerful code interpreter is finally here and a lot of people have been doing some insane things with it creating gifs converting images into animated videos analyzing data and so much more all of this with one tool and a bunch of prompts it is simply incredible in this video i will go through what exactly code interpreter is what are its different use cases how i use it personally for youtube analysis and then free resources that will help you become a better prompt engineer so without wasting any further time let's get started all right so today we will understand how chat gpt's latest code interpreter works the entire video is split into three modules we'll first understand what exactly is this code interpreter and what are the different use cases then we'll understand how i use this new feature inside chat gpt for my youtube analysis and some prompts that you can actually use to get mentorship from chat gpt to improve your content or basically anything so i'll teach you how it can read data from your csv or excel sheets then in the end i will share my very very valuable list of free resources that can help you become a better prompt engineer so let's start with module number one what exactly is code interpreter see if you have the pro plan for gpt which is costing around 20 dollars per month or 1800 rupees per month you will have access to gpt plus within gpt plus they have introduced this new feature called code interpreter now of course the word is slightly complicated but i'll tell you what is the use case for a very long time you could not have chat gpt go through large sheets of data or csv files so now you can actually upload excel and csv files and ask chat gpt to find patterns or do comparisons then you can also ask it to edit images basic editing like cropping changing the color saturation levels making it black and white or also create qr codes in fact you can also convert formats so you can convert a jpeg into a png and vice versa you can also upload an image and ask chat gpt to create a color palette so it will pick all the dominant colors and give you an rgb palette you can also analyze zip files so instead of putting up documents one by one you can create a zip file of all those documents in excel sheets and ask chat gpt to analyze in one single shot rather than uploading them one by one of course if you put a very big pdf or a very big file it often gets into an error so i will be sharing screen recordings where a lot of things also stopped working right so it's very very common to see it crashing in the middle because obviously it's still in its beta mode or Right, so let's get started instead of running all the prompts in real time what i've done is i've just created screenshots and slides so that we quickly skim through all the use cases of course you will also see the screen recordings coming in in the middle where i feel that it's appropriate this we have covered that this only works for the plus plan and to be honest at any point even if you're using chat gpt score interpreter you can always ask chat gpt as to what is it that you can do for me so this is one thing that a lot of people forget that anytime that you are confused you can always ask chat gpt right so the first question that i had was what all can the code interpreter do for me and it gave me a long list of actions that it can do right now when you go to youtube and even see instagram reels you would find a lot of people talking about multiple use cases but i personally feel that for students and young professionals very few of them are actually practical so we will just cover the practical stuff and not everything now i'll show you what i did i did not have a lot of uh, data sets right so the only data set that i could find uh, which was practical was from my youtube studio so if you go into a YouTube studio if you go to the advanced mode on the top right corner you have an option to either download a google sheets not download but to create a google sheet with this data or you can download a dot csv file i downloaded the csv file uploaded it into chat gpt and then said analyze all data in this sheet this is my youtube data you need to go through these numbers and consult me on better youtube titles and you video ideas so this is how it works right it would scan the entire document if you were to click on show work you can actually read how code interpreter is using python to go through all of this data right so the fundamental foundational technology that chat gpt is using to go through all these documents is python once it read my csv it listed out all the components that it could find and obviously i had selected these in my youtube studio and then it actually gave me some basic basic advice right so not very practical advice but i was pretty amazed to see that it could scan so many things in one single shot now if you want to practice code interpreter there's a website 
website called Kegel. I hope that I am pronouncing this right. Or there's Google Trends as well. So both of them can give you some data sets to practice on. Then I said, what are the different ways you can generate graphs and analyze this sheets data, right? So I think I made a small spelling mistake, but yeah, you get the point. So it only told me that there are several ways that we can analyze and visualize the data in this sheet depending on the specific insights you're looking to gain. So it could create correlation, uh, which basically means that you can have two different properties and figure out if there's some relation in between them. Then trend analysis as to what are the trends that I have seen in my YouTube videos over time, such as you subscribers, then top performing videos, impressions versus CTR, word cloud of titles, performance by video category, even time series analysis. Now at any point, if you feel confused at what is time series analysis, then ask chat GPT again as to what does that even mean, right? And then I didn't run this command, but of course you can ask chat GPT to generate examples for each and every one and also explain how it is relevant for you. Then I tried the QR code generator, which was pretty, pretty seamless. So I said create a QR code for www.anshpara.com and then it quickly created this JPEG for me. Now, I scanned this, it worked at that point, but I'm still not sure how long these QR codes are valid for. So if you know the answer, let me know in the comment section. Then I actually uploaded an image of mine and said, can you pick dominating colors and create a color palette? So the first attempt, I think it did not work. But when I ran it again, it actually created a list of five RGB colors. Uh, then in the middle, it stopped working while it was generating the palette image. Uh, but once I started regenerating the responses, it actually gave me an image, which was very, very neat, right? Uh, so I know that a lot of these things are not extremely useful to us right now. But the point of this video is to show you that this thing is evolving. It has officially gone to a point where it can accept all of these data points, right? Now, let me show you some practical use cases, right? How did I use these things for my YouTube channel? The first thing that I was very interested in was the word cloud of titles. I just wanted to see as to what kind of content have I even made throughout the year right so in a very visual way it created an image where i could totally see that the words anshmera ux design ai and figma had the maximum weightage whereas all of these small small things whereas it's learn prompt using web website all of these things did not have that much of influence right and then it could also gain some insights it said that from the word cloud we can see that some of the most frequently used words in your videos include design ux ai 2023 and then this can guide your future content creation for example example, if videos with UX or AI in the title tend to perform well, you might want to create more content on these topics. Makes sense, not that high of an advice, but very interesting to see that it is able to find these common points from a data sheet. Now, if I were to click on show work, you can actually see the Python that is running to get to these outcomes, right? So it is actually running a small Python code where it is going through all of the data. It has created functions and that is the reason why it has been able to create these results. Then I said, can you generate a graph for performance? by video category. Took some time but in the end, it created 4 graphs for me. Average views by category, average watch time by category, average subscribers and then average impressions click through rates, right? And this was very interesting for me because now I realized that for some reason app redesign has performed very very well and which is very interesting for me because I always thought that AI and UX content did more whereas app redesign was very very niche uh, but from the data set that I gave to chat GPT turns out that this category was doing very very well. Then I said after analyzing all your previous results can you give me three data backed recommendations to hit my goal of 250k subscribers in three months. For every recommendation call out the data behind the decision. So it gave me a bunch of advice but the top three actually made a lot of sense. It said focus on app redesign content which makes a lot of sense right and then because I had prompted to make sure that you give me data back decisions it also tells me why it is saying so. So it says data backing app redesign videos lead an average of these many views these many watch times and these many subscribers gained per video. Then it said leverage AI content for better click through rates. The AI category has competitive click through rates suggesting that these videos are appealing and successfully encourage viewers to click which actually gives me a very interesting idea that maybe I should try redesigning using AI tools right so that is probably one of the ideas that we can put in in our list of ideas as well then it said optimize video titles for better impressions the word cloud analysis showed that words like design UX career Hindi frequently appear in your video titles so you know now this was actually good advice but to get to this point I actually had to prompt my GPT again and again right so this video is not going to be very in-depth because to be honest the prompts that I showed you right now these are the good ones everything else might not be relevant at least to my audience because you guys are not like core core prompt engineers or core core programmers so I would recommend you to check this out 
and start improving your prompting skills in general. So I wanted to share some resources that you can use, free resources to improve your prompt engineering skills. So the first one is of course our own YouTube playlist. I always recommend this because to be honest, I am not seeing enough in-depth content on YouTube which talks about prompt engineering in detail. Uh, there are four or five creators that I really look up to and I keep mentioning them again and again, right? But apart from those four or five people, I feel like I am very, very excited to cover these small, small nuances of prompt engineering. So this playlist covers chat GPT mid journey and a collection of some very very good prompts. There's one video in Hindi as well. So this one will help you just to get started if you're more comfortable learning in Hindi. Uh, but as I keep saying it is better to start improving your English writing and speaking skills because they will be very very important when you prompt these tools. If you really want to go into the depths of chat GPT prompt engineering then OpenAI has its own documentation and even within that you need to click under guides. There is GPT best practices. If you follow all of these practices, you will become a very, very sharp prompt engineer, but specific to chat GPT, right? But I personally feel that soon all of these models will follow the same first principle. So if you go through this documentation, there is a lot that you will improve. Then there are some resources to keep you up to date with latest AI tools and prompt templates. So there's one website called AIValley.ai, right? And I keep sharing these resources because anytime I talk about chat GPT and mid journey, a lot of people believe that these are the only tools that you need to learn. In reality, these tools are the most popular one. They're positioned very well, but very soon in the next six to eight months, every single field, finance, sales, marketing, design, all of these tools will have their own specialized individual AI tools, right? So if you know those specific core subject related AI tools, you will always have more leverage. So these are the websites where you can find those trending tools and you can also find some trending prompt use cases that will just open up your mind uh, to different use cases, right? Just to see all these possibilities. There's another competitor to AI Valley. It's called supertools.rundown.ai. So again, this one also has a huge, huge list of AI tools. You can always go to the top pick section and just, you know, quickly skim through, make it a habit, maybe once in two weeks, just to go through these websites to keep yourself updated, right? Then you also have datafit.ai. I love this website because it has a huge, huge data set of prompts and these prompts are very, very detailed. So of course, you don't have to reuse all of these, but just in this specific case, right? The top one is effortless and universal mid journey prompt generator. Now, very few people know this, that you can always train your chat GPT into a mid journey prompt generator, right? So this website has some very, very cool trending prompts, very like underrated niche use cases. Then we have promptwine.com. Again, this is also a huge collection of chat GPT prompts. And it's not like these are just for chat GPT, right? You can always use the same prompts in Google Bard, Perplexity AI, Hey Pi, whatever it is that you're using. Then we have learnprompting.org. This documentation is slightly intimidating because it has a lot of content in it. Uh, but if you're in school or if you're in first year of college, if you have that kind of time on your hands, I would strongly recommend you to check this out. This one is very, very detailed, very, very nuanced. There's also futurepedia.io. This is again a huge repository of AI tools. And I personally feel that this one is the most comprehensive. Like the number of AI tools that this website has is unbelievable, right? And they keep adding these tools daily. They also have a trending AI tool column and you will be shocked to see the kind of things that people are making in the world right now. There's also there's an AI for that.com. So when you go to this website, instead of like small, small tools, they also have these libraries, very, very specific use case AI. They might not be the best fit. They might not solve too many problems. But again, it's just interesting to know that there are people solving small, small problem statements using AI. And very soon there will be one big tool, one big umbrella tool, which would encapsulate all of these use cases, but it's just to make you aware where the world is leading. Right now, when you go through these resources, it's very, very important that you document everything that you learn. Otherwise, you will forget, right? There are many documentation tools, but I personally use Notion. If you don't know how Notion works, I have also made a YouTube video that says how to use Notion, where I actually show you my Notion pages, how I document, what is my logic behind it, what are some quick shortcuts, right? So this was a very simple, clean video. I didn't want to make a very in-depth video because it's a very simple topic to understand. Apart from this, we have some very in-depth videos on writing your UX case studies, redesigning, even UI improvements. So there's a lot that you can learn for free. I will put all the links in description. Let me know in the comment section if there's something specific you want me to cover in the next video. We've been uploading some very cool reels on our Instagram as well. And we have a broadcast channel where I keep sharing these resources. So if you join that broadcast channel, you will have 
have access to a lot of more behind the scenes and resources and insights and thoughts. So I keep posting there on the broadcast channel. You will find the link in description. Make sure you click on subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you never miss an update. I hope that you're taking care of your mind and body. This is your dost Anshmera signing out. If you like this video, make sure you click on like and hit the subscribe button. I regularly upload videos on UX design, marketing and storytelling.